work in English language we have the challenge which is a, an advantage and a disadvantage of using two terms too often uh, synonymously. We have work as such and we have labor and the difference between the two is not often clear and it definitely is usually not taken into consideration. So uh, if we look at the term the um, point of departure is really that we have a work, that's the common understanding, uh, work as the uh, organized form, I take it here from a, from a dictionary, um, work as labor, employment, uh, occupation, job, while labor is the effort expended on a particular task, the toll, the work. And if we look at both of them, we usually see different connotations. The one is a general connotation as uh, usually as negative in our societies today. It is about uh, work is only half of the life and there is another uh, half and usually it is uh, implicitly suggested. The other part is the, the really uh, livable one. Uh, we have the uh, separation or the challenge as well to uh, reconcile uh, work and life. Um, what else we do, do we have? We have not least uh, Sisyphus, the uh, ancient story which had been used later as well, uh, for instance by Camus, uh, as the effort of <coughs> uh, human beings always in need of exposing them, uh, exposing them uh, to actually labor. Uh, labor was meant um, as as a hopeless, uh, because endless. A task uh, that actually leads to, to nothing. So far, <clears throat> we are usually talking about uh, labor here in terms of this effort uh, spent on a task, and uh, the reason for it uh, may be a religious one, may be a cultural one, and maybe as well a philosophical one or anthropological one that uh, human beings are considered, have been considered as uh, incomplete, as helpless uh, without help, uh, without external support. And one of the external support is actually uh, the, the result of, um, of labor, that what we cannot do we replace or we, uh, we substitute uh, by something that we produce. So there is this ambiguity mm. and in any case in our societies today there is not only this ambiguity, there is as well the need to work, to be employed, to make an income, to make a living, as it is said. Um, in our societies today means that but whatever we are doing in social science, and of course here as well, is depending on something concrete, on a concrete understanding. And in this case, it means as well that work is counterposed, as I said implicitly or directly as well, uh, counterposed uh, something else that is the nicer part, that is the free part. Um, for instance, uh, if we refer to Schiller, uh, the play. The play is obviously useless, considered to be useless. It is an open uh, situation where uh, people just uh, are, are playful, are, are uh, without goal. 
that's the main thing. Uh, there is no real goal in play, in playing, uh, even if it may be something uh, of, of a competitive game or so. Uh, but it is fundamentally considered as uh, playful in terms of not having a goal, not being a, an activity oriented uh, on a goal. This is different, and this is in particular the, the uh, main point uh, of work, which is considered as gainful in terms of overcoming uh, a challenge, overcoming uh, the, the lack of uh, completeness we have, and it is uh, it has a goal. Um, it has a direct uh, a goal, in, in especially uh, or in particular this this way that it is oriented on uh, overcoming a difficulty, overcoming an incompleteness, uh, incomplete uh, situation, or something like this. Mm. There is this general orientation, <clears throat> but then, as I said, we have to look at the concrete situation. Uh, it is not about labor, it is not about work as such, but it is about the situation of under-capitalist conditions. And there we have wage labor, uh, that is the point of uh, reference. And even if it is not directly wage labor, wage labor is always the point of reference. This is as well the case if we are looking at, uh, for instance, uh, DIY activities or uh, things that are that could be as well undertaken in a situation of employment. Um, it is important to see this as well as activity, and this is again something in, in general first, as, a, as part of a metabolism uh, where people, human beings, interact with, first and foremost, with their environment. There is this, inter, uh, this, this metabolism and it linked, can be linked to the question um, of the incompleteness um, that, for instance, we need something to eat. And this something to eat is coming out of the environment and we, we take it from there. Um, this is hugely relevant as we have a multiple relationality um, when it comes to labor slash work. We have, on the one hand, the, the simple activity, the physical activity of a human being uh, doing something. This is a movement, and it is, as such, first and foremost, just a movement. Of course, we have already here, in this very primitive, if you want, very simple activity, we have the environment. Because if it is cold, if it is warm, if it is wet, um, there is any, in, in any case uh, some form of environment involved. <clears throat> then we have another uh, dimension to it in terms of environment that we consciously interact with the environment uh, to use, if we want, to use this natural environment uh, to our action and in very simple ways we take something out, we absorb something or we assimilate to the environment. As such it is important to have this relationality or this relation uh, that work, labor is always something in principle interlinked with something else with another uh, part of nature. I say with another part of nature because, of course, we are nature. C. 
singularity aside, uh, the new, the modern latest uh, debates on, on this. And then we have, of course, the interaction with other people, with other human beings, uh, that is part of the socialized labor. And it is uh, taking form, again, as a direct interaction amongst people and as an indirect uh, uh, so far uh, that together with others we have a common goal and or we have uh, we, we relate uh, to, to the same uh, environment uh, by way of well dealing with it. <clears throat> this is important uh, to understand that with capitalism, or let's say with a modern, uh, increasingly commodity-oriented um, forms of activities here, there is a shift taking place that is linked at the same time and finding, it, and it, uh, finding its expression uh, to another separation or distinction, and that is uh, the most important uh, distinction uh, and actually contradiction, um, the use value and the exchange value. We can say the use value is the immediate or links to this immediate metabolism of interacting with something, having a goal, and uh, but the same is true for, for, for play, uh, interacting with nature. The other dimension is the exchange value, and the exchange value has, especially under or only under capitalist uh, conditions, has this value, if you want, as such. We are dealing with exchange. The rest doesn't uh, exist and doesn't in interest us. Of course, as always, uh, and again and again said, um, as well in my own lectures here, um, we, we don't have, we do not have uh, any exchange if there is not any use. However, this use value uh, is not of interest when it comes to uh, analyzing this, this economic side. It is necessary, but it is by far not, uh, not even relevant for the economic dimension, for looking at the economic dimension. Now we have this contradiction and we have an, a, 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 an increasing separation uh, that actually work under condition of capitalism <clears throat> is as well not relevant in, in its concrete terms as a concrete uh, uh, activity, but it is only relevant in the respect of exchange value. As an abstract form of work, which is not relevant, not assessed in terms of what we actually do, but only assessed as a matter of or having uh, a specific value. We can leave aside here uh, the calculation of the value. Only so far one remark that with this it is obvious that the value of, mm, of, of work, of labor, is not seen by the valuation of something, by the subjective dimension. Um, this is a, a very good work, which I highly value. Um, then it would be concrete work, uh, in which we are not interested in this case. <clears throat> 
I, I, I mention this for a special reason. Of course, on the one hand, because it is relevant here, as well as a matter of um, assessing and, and uh, judging about work and labor, but more important is the point that with this we actually have another dimension uh, being proved, namely that the margin, margin that marginalism uh, is is not really understanding uh, what we are looking at when we are looking at uh, capitalist um, forms of production. And marginalism does not reject the notion of capitalism, um, by far not. Uh, actually, it says it is capitalism that uh, is, is especially relevant when it comes to uh, marginalism and vice versa. Capitalism is defined by the market, and the market is a matter of <coughs> supply and demand, and this is based on the idea of, uh, yeah, this is something I really value uh, or not. This is defining, uh, then, so to say, uh, in this perspective, uh, the, the value. No, it is not. The value is not the subjective uh, value. It's not the reflection of how much I value an, a concrete activity, but it is a matter of assessing the abstract dimension. So we have this uh, distinction or, or the separation that takes place uh, with this metabolism. I increasingly am not interacting or relating, interrelating with nature. But the metabolism is getting more and more abstract because I interact only with a very specific part of the entire process. It is separated, it's part of this division of labor, and as such it is not really an interaction with nature. But there we have actually a reduction of this relationship on utilizing the environment. The environment is externalized explicitly another set of uh, factors of production. We have this dis distinction between uh, the, the three factors of production. One of it is so supposedly work, the other is uh, raw material. The externalization of nature, taking it out, pushing it out of the metabolism and separating it from the process of labor. And as such, we have as well the alienation as a fundamental process that takes place here because I am not part of anything anymore, meaning part of the entirety of goal-oriented activities. I lose actually the goal. The goal is not this interaction and the result. The goal is simply to make a living, as we say in English, uh, to earn a sufficient amount of money. <clears throat> this sets work into the wider context of an itemized issue that is separated from life, that is part of an entire set of division of labor, separation of activities from each other, and with this um, part of an a complex structuration of society, restructuration of society um, that makes it possible and necessary uh, to speak of this as a, an itemized issue 
that has its own, apparently, its own value, not related to the goal, not related to, um, to the metabolism, but it is a morphosis, metamorphosis taking place that work as such is exactly this activity of a Sisyphus pull, uh, pushing the, the stone up the hill, knowing that it will fall down, knowing that it is an endless effort without any uh, substantial, any genuine uh, inherent value uh, as such. We say, I have to work, I have to go to work, and we have this famous uh, phrase of Marx um, that man is only man outside of this relationship, outside of work, but at work he loses uh, this fundamental uh, feeling, this fundamental uh, issue of existing. It is a loss not of the negativity of this activity, but it is a loss of the own nature of human being. Because with another approach, with this wider approach of uh, work labor, we can say as well, it is the fulfillment of the ability of humankind, of human beings, not only to interact, but to shape, to, sh uh, uh, to create, co-create, and uh, recreate um, his or her life. <laughs>